So now we need to uh, configure the Postgres database. So we'll begin by initializing the database. Okay, and once it's been initialized, we'll start it up. And then the Postgres database should be started. So now we're going to switch over to the Postgres user. So sudo su Postgres. And so now if we do PSQL, we can now lo log into the Postgres database. So we are going to begin by creating all the, the databases. So we're going to create a database, create database ITB2 transmot. Okay. So the database has been created. So now we're going to create a user, create user ITB2 transmot with password of demo user. That user has been created. So then we're going to grant all privileges on database itb2 transmot to itb2 transmot. Okay, so now we've created the database, created the user. So there's multiple ways you can uh, load up the, soft, the, the database. You can make a database for each cell, the CSC, the ontology, the PM, the hive. Can also create one database and one schema uh, and a schema for each one of those. Uh, so you can create a schema for the ITB2 metadata, the and uh, the CRC, etc. We're just going to put everything in one database for now, just so, for simplicity sakes. So now that we've cre created this, we need now we need to modify the Postgres configuration files in order to allow um, Wildfly in. To connect to it because Wildfly connects it through JEPC or Java. So we're going to begin by exiting it out of this Postgres user and then quickly just switching over to root, sudo root. Uh, and then we're going to go to uh, varlib and then pg sql and then under data. So the folder we're in is varlib pg sql data. In here, you'll notice there's a couple of configuration files. The first one we need to edit is the Postgres one. And if we go down just a little bit past this file locations, and then we get to this listening address, which is co currently commented out. So we're gonna uncomment it. And then I also, uh, for these demo sites, I just, uh, I put a stop so that it will, anyone can connect to it from your Mac or from your Windows machine. Um, it basically lets anyone connect to it from any IP and that has access to it. And so we're going to leave the default port. So the only thing I do is I uncomment the listen address and I uh, put an asterisk there. So let's save this. And so the other file that I edit is this pghba.com, okay? And this specifies who can actually connect to it. So any, anyone could try, attempt to connect to it, but who is Postgres gonna allow to connect to it? And so I uncomment, I comment out everything, okay? And then I add the following. I, this is what I add. So I add, so it's a peer as your local host, and then it's also trust the local host, and, and it trusts anyone connecting to it. So this basically opens up uh, Postgres to be fairly vulnerable to uh, connections. Um, but as I said, this is demo data, so it's easier just to, do this instead of trying to figure out the current IP of this machine and just block only this machine. So, so now that those two, two have been edited, I now need to restart Postgres. Okay, so now Postgres has been restarted 
And so now I can begin by loading in some of this data. So what? So we're going back to the folder that we're at. Uh, exit out of root, uh, and we'll go into the edu data, and then we'll go into the release, and then we'll go into new install. And in here, those uh, we go into the CRC and we edit the uh, DB properties file. So we're going to have to edit the DB properties files for all of these five folders. Actually, the four, we're not going to do the identity management. And so we have an Oracle section, which will comment out. Okay. And there's a SQL Server section and a Postgres section. So we're going to uncomment out all the Postgres. And then the username that we used was itp 2 transmont And... The database was ITB2 Transmont. And now we have a project. So there's two different projects that you can have, uh, default demo projects. One is the original 133 patient set, which is the demo data. And then you can also have the ACT Cynthia data set. So because we're going to be doing the ACT Cynthia, we're going to change this project from demo to ACT. And that's it. So now that we've modified the CRC, let's begin by modifying the rest of the folders. Uh, so go into the Hive, the VI, DB project. And here you'll notice there is no project in this one. Um, not all of the cells uh, utilize a project, the Hive and the PM being the two that don't. Uh, the ontology and the CSC do right, in the workplace. So now we're going to go into the metadata and modify that file. This one also has uh, another uh, property, the dimension one, and then the schema name. Th these two are used when you're trying to lo load the uh, total nums. So in this case, the schema name will be called public because that is the default schema for uh, for Postgres. So we are going to save this and go into the PM1, the VI, the DB properties in this, and likewise do the same. And the last one is the workplace. Set the project, project to act. So now that we've configured all the D DB properties, the next thing to do is to actually just run it. So if you've installed ITP2 in the past, you, you know that you would have to go into each one of these and run an ant script to build it for each one. Um, in our current version, we put a build script below right here, build.xml. And then you can just execute this and it will run through all of them. So we do an ant and then we do our create database and then our load data. And as we can see, it's dying to execute through the processes. Some of these might take a while to run, especially loading the act ontologies. As we can see, it's it completed. It took a little bit of time from the build. It says it took. 57 minutes and 39 seconds. So almost an hour to load just the ontology and the concept dimension.